Welcome back to our little Boulder Dish in Pico 8 series and this is part 8 I guess and today we're going to implement some enemies because Rocky, that's what I called our hero, um, doesn't just have to collect diamonds and fight some falling rocks, he also has to um, fight some enemies who try to kill him. <laughs> Let's get started by adding to our update function and this right now needs needs to update our enemies which we don't have yet. Oh, that was caps lock. And we will go into file number three and we'll do this our call this our enemy enemy stuff. <coughs> And we will do our function update enemy enemies right here. And then we have to go to our sprites because we have enemies already. These let's start with this guy right here. And what we do is we give him the sprite flag number two, and that tells um, our program that this is an enemy. We will implement that. Right now it doesn't tell it anything. But by clicking the number two, we know that is an enemy and we can react to that. Let me quickly check if we have any other sprites. No, okay. Good. So while we are here, we can already go and put one of these enemies on the map. And how this works is as follows. What we will do is we will put an enemy on the map. Let's grab one of these uh, bugs right here and put him, let's put him here and we will give him a little room to move and this bug will be one of these enemies that move around so they always try to go straight if they can't they turn 90 degrees go down if they can't go down turn 90 degrees go there 90 degrees so um, if it's in just one field and there's nothing to move around, it just turns and else it will wander all the, the way around here in this space. So if the player is standing here, um, right now he would be killed. But if we place the bug, let's say here, the bug would always move like this. So if the player is right here, nothing happens. The player will be safe. Okay, so how do we implement this whole enemy stuff? Um, we placed the first frame of the animation. So this is a two uh, frame animation. You can see that right here, that um, the legs are moving. And we will place the first frame here. And we will do an init function, which checks if there are enemies on the map. And if there's an enemy on the map, we will create a special object for that or a data structure which saves the type of enemy, um, which direction it's heading, um, its speed and stuff like that. And we will update the map and pick it from the map in uh, our update function and place it on the next um, step and next step and next step and so on. So that is pretty much the basic plan for enemies. So when we init the game, we go and check for first frames of any kind of enemy. So anything that is or has the sprite flag number two um, will be an enemy and will be created in code. We have to go to our map stuff and right here we have our flags and we will set our um, enemy flag to number two so that we remember what we have here and at the end of init map we will create a function that creates our enemies and that is co called um, create enemies and we will implement that function in our enemy stuff um, file so this will be called once um, 
one time when the map is created. So for every level, we don't have levels yet, which is a topic of another episode. Um, for every level, we, we call this init map function. And with init map, we create the gravity map and we create the enemies. And all the enemy stuff will go here. We'll have another function, and that is the player interact function. And, and that, that function will um, check if the player has hit an enemy or not, or an enemy has hit the player. So we will put that into the um, player stuff. So we put this here. <coughs> then in update map, we have to make a change. And that is something we missed, or I missed in the last uh, episode. That is that we only check for this if um, the game is active. So we don't want any tiles to fall when the game is over already. So the tile has gravity and game active is true. So if game active is not true, then nothing happens. Check if it still works, looks good. So right now this enemy, we can walk through, we can do all kinds of stuff, nothing happens. Which is all good. Let's quickly check, okay, door opens, game one. So we should probably save the game. We I didn't show that, I guess, in the uh, last episode. So let's do this now. And we will save this by going to the um, prompt here and tell it to save and give it a name. Let's call this rocks um, p8. So we have already created some functions here. And what we will do next is we will create a table which stores our enemies. And tables, as you all know, is just these curly braces and um, you put stuff in there. Then we go and define which type of enemies we have. And right now, if we go to the sprites, we have one, this is number 18, and we will tell it that we call this type. Type is just, type bug is just uh, variable so that we can reference it and don't have to write 18. So sprite 18 is our type bug. We will have more types um, in the future, but not right now. So let's stick with a type 18 for now. We will have a direction for our enemy. So we will define the directions. Just like type bug, we don't want to type uh, which, which enemy, which frame it is. Right now this is only heading left. So that's okay. We will have different frames. And we can create these now. Um, let me quickly think. We will go and copy this frame. We can, you can do, do this by command C right here or control C on the PC. And you go here and you press control V or command V. And you can flip this by pressing F or you can rotate it by pressing R. And this is a down facing position. So we use this and we also have a down facing animation. So we do the same here and we again press R and then we go and do the same here until we have all the animation faces we need. R, R, we, so that should give us animation in all four directions. So we have the left direction, which is 18. We have the down direction, which is 20. We have the right direction, which is 22. And the up direction, which is 24. And we will just put this down our code. Um, enemy direction uh, left is 18. And now we go and copy this, down is 20, 22, 24, and that is right, and that is up. We will have an enemy update counter, which is to slow down the enemies, because if we would do an update every time we do update, which is 30 times a second, 
the player would have no chance against the enemies. So we'll have an enemy update counter, which we just set to zero right now. So let's quickly put this on top because this is the first function we call, which is create enemies. What we do now is we go and browse through the complete map and check if there's anything um, which has the type bug. So if there's an element or a map tile which is this right here, so you always have to put this on the map, not all the other um, animations. Just put this where an enemy should go on the map and the program will take care of the rest. And we use our classic for loop um, and we go from top to bottom and from left to right. Seven map tiles. We check if the map tile at x y equals our bug type. Then we create an enemy in our um, in our table up here. So we go and we say this enemy, we create a new table, which we then put in the table, enemy.x equals x, the actual or current position. Sometimes I type these semicolons. Enemy.y equals y. Um, this enemy.type equals type bug and this enemy dot direction uh, no, equals e direction left because it's this one here is going to the left okay and then we add this to our table to our enemies table up here and we do this by add enemies this enemy. And just like that, we have a table full of all the enemies on the map. So this is our create enemies function. And I'm just doing one enemy in this episode. Um, if you download the Pico 8 file for this episode, you will see that there are more enemies with different types of movement and stuff like that. We will do one enemy here. I will show you the other in a minute, but I won't go into detail because they are pretty much the same. So this does add um, this type of enemy. If you want to do more enemies, you just do an else if here. Check for another type, which you define up here. So you can just go and let's say uh, do another enemy here, uh, orange blob of some kind with the huge eye. And if you want to use this, you have a 26. And then you would go up here and type type blob 26. And you would do a check for type 26 and here um, for type blob and here type blob. And then you're good to go. I have another enemy in your enemy list and can handle it in the update enemies function. Good, but we won't do this right here. So let's delete this for clarity, not to get confused. Before we go into update enemies, we create another function and that is the function that slows down the enemies so that we don't get an update every time um, update is called and that is called enemy update timer. And we will do some optimization in the future in this um, for this because we have some, quite some timers around now. Um, and we will comp uh, compact all this stuff a little together. We have about an eighth of our um, available tokens already used. So we have to have some room for levels. So we will compress the code down a little and optimize as much as possible just to squeeze out the last bit of uh, tokens we can here. But for now we are going to uh, in explanatory mode and that will be a little bit more uh, verbose. 
so to say. Okay, so our enemy update timer is pretty straightforward. We have our enemy update counter, which is up here. And we will increase this by one every time we call this function. And if enemy update counter um, is greater than 10, so if we have called this 10 times, then then we go and set enemy update counter back to zero and we return true. Because we call this um, to check if we should update an enemy. So we return true or else if this is not the case, we just return false. So this way we have a function we can call and don't have to take care of all the stuff inside here. We just call it, ask it if we should update. If we should update, then we go and do that. And that is exactly what we do now in this update enemies function. And we say if enemy update timer is true, then do stuff. So now we know the enemies are not too fast. And then we go for E in all enemies do. And that will iterate over our enemies table up here. So it will get, give us all the enemies in the table and we can uh, move them, check them, do whatever we want. Now we go and check if we can move the, uh, the bug enemy we have. So what comes now, you can just copy for all the other enemies and change their uh, movement behavior. So if E, which is now the current enemy we have in the, um, in the loop here, if E dot type, which we have set here, equals type bug, so if we have a bug here in this um, at this position, then now comes the code for movement. What we will do is we will check if e dot direction, so the direction of the enemy we have right now, equals right. So if the enemy is currently moving to the right or facing right, which is this right here, then we will check if the map position next to the enemy on the right, because it wants to move to the right, if this is empty. So if mget x plus 1 comma y and e dot x and e dot y. We, we have to take the um, enemy coordinates because we don't have an, uh, coordinates here. So we are using the current position of the enemy and check if the x position plus one, so the next to the right is free, um, equals empty. I guess empty is defined in our um, map stuff function. Yeah, it's here. So if this tile is tile number zero, then we go and set a map tile, which is e dot x, e dot y. And we set that to empty. So the current position of the enemy will be an empty tile and we will set the position next to it with m set e dot x plus one, which is to the, next, uh, to the right e dot y and we will put our bug there which currently is the um, frame number <coughs> 22 so we could also 
ask here for um, 22 and here for 22, but it's a bit more, uh, a bit better readable if we do it like this. And we will tell the enemy in our table. So e dot x will inc be increased by one, so we know we move to the right. And next time we check, everything is still consistent. We, don't we do not just copy over the uh, image or the tile, but we also update the coordinates. So if this is empty, we do this. Else, we go, so the bug tries to move right, but there's no free field. Then we do this, we turn the bug 90 degrees and we let it face down. Just face down for now, not update, just face down. So what we do is we tell it to e dot, so we update the enemy's direction and set it to e der down. Let's check if this works. No, it doesn't. Unexpected symbol, ah, okay. Still doesn't like it. Yeah, that should be plus equals. Okay, now we have it. Okay, so still the bug doesn't kill us, still the bug isn't moving because it's not facing right. So what we have to do now is we have to do this for all directions and we will just go and yeah, do that. So let's copy this and let's say else if the direction is down. So if the buck is already facing down, we don't check the x plus one, we check the y plus one because we, we want to go down. And the same here. And we um, set the down sprite and we set the y plus one and if that's not the case we are facing down and there's no room to go down we turn 90 degrees and go left that is down next when we are heading left we want to go x minus one to the left And we put the left animation there and we go x minus one minus equals one and if we want to go left and there's not room to go left we turn 90 degrees and go up and finally we check for up <coughs> And that is y minus one and y minus one and we have the up motion or up icon and if we can't go up we turn 90 degrees and go right again and then we have a full circle let's check uh, unclose line at uh, okay the else if just one thing here. As you can see, the bug is moving, but it's not quite moving as expected. And that might be because we again have one of these map issues. So let's go and really clear this space out. Not sure if I used. Hmm still moving like that. So it should be going down when it hits the left uh, wall. It's moving. There sh still seems to be an error. Yeah, okay, no, it's working correctly. Let's put in the bug at a different spot. So this is trying to move like this. It's always turning uh, clockwise. And since it's turning clockwise, there's no way it can go up, so it just moved along here. So if we would place this bug, let me quickly delete this here. If you would place this bug here, 
it now should really move in a full circle. Let's try this. Oh, okay. That's unfortunate. But it shows that our bug uh, can be um, trapped, which is nice. So let's see if we can untrap him. Yeah, he's moving now. Yeah, that is the correct behavior for this kind of bug. Can't kill us right now, but it's moving. That is good. It's not animated or anything. We will do this um, in one of the next episodes, real animation for the player and for the uh, sprites. But right now, this is how this is going to go. Nice. So that works. Um, Let's put another one on the screen just to show that it really works. Oh, that's a bit much. And bugs uh, even um, try to get around each other because they are just map tiles and they are not empty map tiles. And so that should work too. Let's see. Yeah, that bug is moving nicely. works as expected as expected very good now what's missing is that the bug can actually kill us that would be nice okay for our player can be killed function let's call it that um, we need another function which is to check where the enemy or if an enemy is at a specific point it will much it will be for much cleaner code to do that we we'll put this in our enemy code base right here so it's another helper function and we call this um, is enemy at and that will return true or false and we will give it the coordinates of the player and or the coordinates of the position the player wants to move to and um, check if there's an enemy so we have um, for e in all enemies we will iterate over our enemy table braces here do and we will just check if e dot x equals x and e dot y equals y so if on this position we give the x and y coordinates if there's any kind of enemy in our table at this position e x e y then return true and if that is not the case Man. So if we went through all the loop and no enemies at this position, then we turn false. And that way we know exactly if there's an enemy at a position or not. Let's move this player interact function to our enemy stuff for now. <coughs> so this is now in our enemy stuff file. And that is pretty easy. This is now collision checking. And since we are moving on a map and since we uh, are always going eight pixels and stuff like that, uh, it's pretty easy to check if there's a collision or not because we don't have any kind of circles we have to draw around or stuff like that, which will be more complex in a jump and run game, for example. But we don't have that. So what we check if is um, if is enemy at, at player1.x, player1.y. So we check if there's an enemy at the position the player is moving to. Then game active false. The game is over for now. And so that should be all there is to it. Bam. Try this again. Let's try the other one. Oof. Works. Nice. Okay. So you never have to touch this function again, except for you want to do some fancy stuff here. Yeah, that is uh, how to do enemies. So yeah. thanks for watching. Uh, um, in the next episode, we will go and create a start and end screen. 
yeah, that will be interesting and that feels much more like a game then. And we will have animations in one of the upcoming episodes and we will do levels, of course. So, until next time, time. thanks for watching and bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.